This is a vintage Neumann U87, one of the most famous studio microphones in the world. It's been here for decades and you've probably heard it on so many records. These vintage ones obviously aren't made anymore and the newer ones sound slightly different due to changes in the circuit and the capsule. So everyone's looking for these vintage U87s. Unfortunately, if you find one second hand, it will easily set you back a few thousand dollars. <gasps> ah no. The good news is you can build your own U87 for way less. At least that's what Dachmann Audio claim with their new do-it-yourself kit, the DA87i. Can we really make a Neumann clone in an afternoon? And will it be as good as the original? Well, today we're gonna look at what's in the kit. But wait! Before we start, a little bit of history. The idea of building your own U87 isn't so new at all. The Group DIY forum, for example, is full of enthusiastic people who are sharing their ideas, concepts, schematics and resources for anything DIY studio gear. And they have already been discussing U87 style parts and components for years. There are pages like mikeparts.com, vintagemicrophonepcbkit.com or Chang'e Studio 939. They all offer kits and parts for a U87 clone and other microphone classics. And let's not forget about companies like Warm Audio, Stem Audio and a few others who also sell their version of the U87, suggesting that this is the real deal, of course. So, with all these DIY pioneers and commercial suppliers in mind, let's see what the Dachmann kit brings to the table. The first thing in the box is this assembly guide. A nice little brochure with detailed instructions on how to build the mic, lots of photos, info on the individual components and where they have to go, transformer wiring, the mic capsule, troubleshooting tips, so that's nice. What else have we got? This is a shock mount to keep your microphone in place and to reduce vibrations. Yeah, it's a large and pretty sturdy shock mount with rubber bands, very similar to the one that comes with the Neumann U87. What's quite unusual though is that you tighten your mic with these little screws that remind me of some ancient serial port connectors on your printer or a VGA display. Also included in the kit is this digital multimeter, which is quite funny because the instructions even say that this kit is for people experienced in working with electronics and this is not an appropriate first project if you have never sold it before. Well, if you have sold it before, then very likely you already own a multimeter. So to me it's not quite clear why they would add one here. It's a nice little gimmick, but I think I will use my own. Then we have a bag of components, which are all electronic parts inside the microphone. Okay. Okay, this is the capsule. The capsule is probably the most important component in a microphone build. 90% or so of the mic sound comes from the capsule. This here is called the DAK87 and on their website Dachmann Audio make it look like it's one of their own developments, but it actually appears to be a pretty common mic capsule from Asia, probably China, as you can see from the little sticker here. The white plastic thing is the saddle that will hold our capsule inside the microphone. Next we have the transformer and some switches. Hmm. 
Resistors. Funny brown ones from Dale. And the trim part. Nice high quality resistors. And capacitors, including Wima film caps, the brown tantalum caps, Vishai, and these grey polystyrene caps. All the good ones you will want to have in your audio path. And finally, the PCBs, the printed circuit boards, and some hookup wire. We have three PCBs here that we need to break apart, I think. Yeah. Okay. Good quality. I think I've seen these PCBs before, but uh, more on that later. And finally, we come to the part that you are probably most curious to see. The mic body itself. It comes in a little wooden box. But be warned, this box looks much better and more exclusive on pictures than it really is. It's not made of cherry wood or something, although it looks like it is. Instead, it's rather cheap wood and it feels pretty rough without any sanding or varnish. So, frankly, it's not as elegant as they say, but it's a nice accessory. So let's open the box. And there it is. This is a beautiful mic body. Yeah. Looks pretty much like the Neumann. By the way, the box doesn't have any finger holes and it's a little bit fiddly to get the microphone out. But here we go. So, here's the nice Dachmann audio logo, which of course resembles the original Neumann logo. It's a very similar badge. And also the black ring on the bottom looks basically the same as the one we find on the U87. This is just a plastic sticker really and apparently it already comes off here, although it's brand new. And also the head basket seems to be very close to the original. You know what? Let's put the Dachmann and the Neumann next to each other and see how they compare. As you can see, the Dachmann mic on the left is considerably larger than the Neumann on the right. It's both taller and wider. And, by the way, so is the shock mount. That means the U87 won't fit inside the Dachmann shock mount properly. But hey, that's not what it's intended for, right? The head basket, again, is slightly bigger on the Dachmann. As you might know, the size and shape of the head basket, as well as the mesh inside, all contribute to the mic sound. So if we want our clone to sound as close as possible to the original Neumann U87, we'll have to see if this difference in size makes a difference in sound. The Neumann has these famous purple switches for the mic pattern, while the Dachmann audio only comes with standard switches and engravings in the body. But overall, I must say, the mic body in the Dachmann audio kit looks and feels quite nice. It's solid and sturdy and really creates the impression of a valuable microphone. Now, let's have a look inside, shall we? It's interesting, the empty mic body, the tube without any components inside, is already heavier than the entire Neumann. The XLR connector is already hooked up for us. And just like in the U87, these two rails on either side will be used to mount and hold the circuit boards. Talking of the boards, remember I said the printed circuit boards look familiar to me? Here's why. Earlier in this video, I showed you the page vintagemicrophonepcbkit.com. Look at this PCB. It was created and designed many years ago by Danny Bouchard, a long-time DIY guru, if you will. This board is his version of the vintage U87 circuit. Here's another shot from the top. 
and now look at the Dachmann Audio PCB. See that? Everything is the same. Same measurements, same holes and traces, even the SIG screen is exactly the same. Isn't that baffling? Well, the PCBs look the same because they are the same. Dachmann Audio were given permission to copy Danny's existing circuit boards and rebrand them until they can come up with their own PCB designs. In fact, the entire DA87i kit was, let's say, heavily inspired by DIY solutions that have already been out there for quite a while. The owner of Dachmann Audio is Josh Sulaski. In this OWC podcast, he talks about building microphone clones from micparts.com. And in this blog article, he writes about mic parts, vintage microphone PCB kit.com, and he even mentions the group DIY forum. So he is well aware of the DIY community and their resources. And what he does with his DA87i is to bring these resources to a commercial kit. Now, don't get me wrong, it's very convenient indeed to have someone compiling the complete set for you and offering it in a one-stop shop. And you must admit that the Dachmann Audio website looks much cleaner and is easier to navigate than many of the old-school DIY pages out there. Still, you know, taking something from the free and open-source DIY community and turning it into a commercial business model just doesn't feel right to me. That leads me to my conclusion. Is the DA87i from Dachmann Audio a good option if you want to make your own vintage-style U87? Well, yes and no. Yes, it is indeed a great kit with pretty decent components and solid hardware. Even though I haven't built it yet, I can already tell from the choice of components that this will actually be a good-sounding microphone with a vintage circuit. Maybe not exactly like the original Neumann U87, but still close and very usable, I assume. Plus, this looks like a real fun build. Also, I like the idea of having everything you need to build a microphone in one single kit, instead of sourcing the parts from a few different shops like you have to do with a lot of DIY projects. What I don't like, however, is the attitude of making this kit look like something unique and generic when there's not much generic about it. Most parts are imported from Asia, you could as well get them elsewhere. The bill of material is publicly available, there's even a Mauser card, and everything you need is listed on the DIY pages mentioned earlier. I will leave a few links in the description so you can look them up and make up your mind. But what's your opinion on this? Do you prefer a commercial kit like the DA87i? Or would you rather support the DIY scene and the people who have been doing this for a long time? Please let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear your point of view. And I'm looking forward to a lively and serious discussion with you. Also, let me know in the comments if you would like to see me build this microphone. Then I might make another video for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.